My name is James Morton, I'm a reader in exercise metabolism and sport nutrition at Liverpool John Moores University and I guess the focus of our research is really translating sports physiology to sports nutrition and trying to put the, the two together to maximise not only sport performance but also training adaptations and that's probably one of the most exciting aspects of this area of research in the last 10 years or so. Our laboratory really is, is interested in going from muscle biopsy type work right the whole way through to sport performance work. And the conventional approach in sports science was to, to make sure that the focus of your training was the correct intensity and the correct duration. What we're now learning is that you can have the best training program in the world in terms of your intensity and duration, but if you don't get the nutritional stimulus correct, then effectively sometimes you don't achieve the goals that you've set out to achieve. Now actually what we're thinking is that maybe we should be actually getting the nutritional stimulus correct first before we even start worrying about the intensities and the durations. And the research that we've did over the last five or ten years or so has shown that sometimes if you deliberately restrict carbohydrate, you actually get a much better training adaptation. Whereas the conventional belief in sport nutrition was that you should always train with high carbohydrate availability. What we do in this university is we try and do research in the laboratory and then take that research out to work with professional athletes. So me, for instance, I currently work with Liverpool Football Club, Team Sky and a lot of professional boxers. Sometimes we try and get the elite athletes in to do the research on, or more often than not is we try and get the sub-elite athletes from the local clubs, collect those biopsy information and then try and translate that to the real world. And actually what we, what we should also be doing, and we, we're very good at this at John Moores, is working with these athletes and getting the athletes to inform the research. A lot of people think that it should all be about research informed practice. I think we're now trying to change our term to research engaged practice because sometimes the athletes are actually ahead of the curve and they know what works and they know what doesn't work. And we want to get that information back to the lab and find out why does it work or why does it not work. And one thing we're very good at at John Moore's is, is promoting a research informed curriculum. So the, the data that we'll collect, even today for instance, hopefully in a few weeks time I'll be showing that on a lecture slide. It might be six months, 12 months before that information is actually published in the journal. It might be five years before it becomes textbook information. So what we really try and do in our department is keep the curriculum innovative, contemporary, and also research informed, but also athlete informed. And the students quite like that balance of what happens in the laboratory, but what do these guys do in the real world? How do they win their competitions? How do they train for their competitions?